maayong buntag ka subo. Karong buntag ka usa ka mahinung danon nga discussion ang mahitabo kauba nato ang overseer sa public services. Maria Maria Emma Ramas. Ma'am, maayong buntag. Good morning. Good morning, Rhea. Ma'am, before ta mo dig deeper sa tong discussion karong buntaga kapbahin sa imuhang proposal din hi sa syudad sa Subo alang sa kasulbaran sa ato ang mga basura, alang sa segregation sa ato ang mga basura. Ma'am, can you share sa ato ang publiko kung anong naabot man ka as overseer din hi sa Department of Public Services? Oh, kanang kibaw ka, Ray. In December of 2022, the mayor saw, saw me in, an, in a program, in an activity, and he said, Emma, why would you be interested to join me in, in, your, in my team? So I said, Mayor, um, where, what, what department, what position? And he said, the Department of Public Services. So I think the mayor is aware that I have previous experiences in waste management. So that's why he invited me to be with the city. So I think uh, going back, although my background is uh, accounting, I'm a CPA, but my later years, kanang um, later years na ko nga mga advocacies turned out to be ang akong nasabtan about our environment that if we care for it, we also will be able to care for ourselves. So mo na siya na landing ko aning dapita. Um, I've had previous experiences working for government. I used to be with the Department of Trade and Industry as the division chief for investments, promotion, and uh, industry development. But this was in many, many years ago, 1990 pa. So um, that shows you unsa naka expansive ang akong experience over the many, many years. And it's really a nice talk, karong buntaga, ma'am, nga ma-share ni mo together with those kind of experience sa pila katuig nga imuhang ma-apply din hi sa atong syudad sa Subo. Dako jud kay nagtabang and I'm really sure and confident nga si Mayor Mike apan sa iyang pag-appoint paghatag og tahas kanimo sa kasulbaran din hi sa ato ang mga basura sa syudad sa Subo. Ma'am, can you share sa ato ang publiko ang imuhang mga short plan nga plano diha sa ato ang solid waste management? Ah, uh, kay Kibao Kareya, the city has been practicing and has been implementing purely truck-based solutions in solving solid waste management. And to me, coming from the developmental side of uh, work, no, because um, going back, DTI is a department where there are two main roles. No, They are like the police for, for the economy, like they, they, they uh, check mga prices of goods and then mga hoarding my ana so that's the police side of the DTI but DTI has this side uh, that also helps like develop industries develop the furniture sector the fashion accessory sector electronic sector and so on so uh, I think we have to balance our solutions to being the police at the same time we also implement more developmental work. That means taking longer to achieve, but the solutions are more sustainable and lasting. So, sa akong itanaw, for the longest time, Cebu City has been collecting mixed waste and then dump it in the landfill, we consider the problem solved. Human ang human ang trabaho. But the solution is not really like that. Uh, can we show, I have prepared some slides. Can we show our slide, please? 
while while waiting sa to ang slides nga fl mo flash diha sa to ang screen ma'am i really notice as well nga even sa to ang mga universities sa mga schools nga they are implementing proper garbage segregation however na alagi mga lain-lain nga basurahan pero at the end of the day isago lang gyapon sa janitor mm -hmm. then ini collect sa garbage wala proper segregation and then mapunta siya sa landfill na wag yapoy proper segregation correct and correct and now we can good. see sa ato ang screen ma'am and can you please explain yeah. sa ato ang kita we are generating different kinds of waste because we are generating different kinds of waste there are different ways of disposing even transporting and um, treating this waste. So if you notice, this is a, a world standard uh, averages, no? A big part of the waste that we produce are bio-waste. Mm -hmm. And this bio-waste is best composted and not sent to the landfill. Now, we also generate recyclable waste. This waste can still be used, can still be put to uh, better use by upcycling, recycling, and reusing. And then we also pr generate the hazardous, toxic, special waste. This waste should really be treated specially because it has to be according to the nature of the waste because they can do harm to our environment and to ourselves if we don't do it properly. Now, only a few residual waste should end up in the landfill so to me there is a uh, there is very uh, urgent need for us to do a paradigm shift from the mindset of collecting and disposing waste in the landfill and consider it problem solved to a mindset of reduction of waste and recovery of resources from waste and knowing ma'am nga murag mindset na gyud tinuod nato no nga ah basta nagkolekta lang nalabay lang okay na yes 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 but you know in the international system again no standards in the landsink uh, waste hierarchy model sending our waste to the landfill is the worst thing that we can do to our basura no reusing reduction of volume of waste and recycling are the best things to do and the green things they are sustainable and they can they will um, address some of our uh, problems that we are experiencing so we have to move up the ladder from the landfill situation to a system where uh, we re recover and then divert the waste away from the landfill now in this slide that we are showing to you now is how the system is uh, done today you know the garbage is generated at home or the or the institutions or the private establishments then they are collected by private garbage holders and then brought to a transfer station or if not uh, brought directly to the landfill but if it's brought to transfer stations it's transferred to uh, bigger trucks and then sent to the landfill. But in the transfer station, supposed to be the waste is segregated if it's not segregated at source so that only the waste that are supposed to go to the landfill is sent to the landfill. Next slide, please. So the key really to doing proper solid waste management is segregation and when we say segregation how do we segregate at least four categories to my mind we should do segregation of our bio waste segregation of the recyclables segregation of the special hazardous toxic waste and finally the waste that should go to the landfill these four is uh, four categories are very important and of course when it reaches the trucks it should also be segregated in the trucks meaning um, our or we have an ordinance in the city that requires us to do collection segregated by dates so if we follow that system 
There are days that we should only collect um, bio waste, days where we collect recyclables or dili malata, but uh, I'd like to add to that and separate recyclables from special waste and residual waste in the dili malata portion. So it's important. I think people get discouraged in segregating at source because they see that the waste are mixed in the trucks. So right. from the source, it's segregated. In the trucks, it's segregated. And to the final disposal, it should also go to the proper final disposal facility. Next slide, please. OK. So in the system that we are proposing, we want to capacitate our barangays. We want it to be barangay-led solutions. Barangays should take active role in proper solid waste management. Now, there are different situations for our barangays. We have mountain barangays. We have urban barangays. And um, uh, most of the areas that we in Cebu City uh, is situated in the urban areas, most of the barangays. So the, the common problems of these barangays are that they are densely populated, so they produce more waste, and that they have smaller spaces, unlike the mountain barangays. So we have to craft a program differently for urban barangays and for mountain barangays. Next slide, please. So for urban barangays, we really need to do the clustering of barangays because um, we can still do proper solid waste management if we group the barangays and uh, maximize the resources that we will develop, in, including the infrastructure requirements for solid waste management. And our main focus is really to recover recyclables and bio waste. Now, when we say recover, we divert them away from the landfill. And why should we do that? Next slide, please. Because, for example, the recyclables, they have values. They should be returned to the recyclers and made into new plastics or new glass or new paper, they are not really supposed to go to the landfill. They have values, like for example, paper waste is about eight pesos a kilo. We found buyers for pet bottles for 18 pesos per kilo. And then San Miguel, for example, buys the one liter um, brown bottles for 15 pesos per bottle. So why should we send all this to the landfill and pay about 3,000 pesos per ton to dispose them in the landfill? Next slide, please. But this system requires temporary storage facilities for where we accumulate the recyclables, for example, and allow the recyclers to come and buy them. So these facilities we have to set up. We were thinking because if we do um, permanent structures, it will take a while. So while we're planning for these permanent structures for our MRFs, the materials recovery facilities, we might as well start with um, movable, movable containers. So we're thinking of using container bonds to store temporarily our recyclables, and that's where we will direct the recyclers to come and buy so that it can be a revenue-generating um, proposition for the city instead of a cost to bring them to the landfill. No, So um, all barangays in the law are required to have materials recovery facilities. And of course, in our proposal, we would like the different PUROCs 
sitios, schools, churches, residential subdivisions, and private establishments to have their own temporary storage facilities for recyclables. Next slide, please. Um, I'm sharing with you some of the ideas for certain recyclables that we send to the landfill. For example, wine bottles can be turned into lighting fixtures you know, that can be beautiful, some vases or even pieces of furniture, or planters for succulents, or serving trays for your cookies and nuts. They are not really supposed to go to the landfill. Next slide, please. I also gathered some ideas for plastics. The plastics you can turn into a bird feeder. It's so easy to do. You just, uh, you need a wooden spoon or plastic spoon and a plastic bottle. And then you insert the spoons tilted so that uh, this, when the birds come and peck on the seeds, the seeds will just slide down to the spoons. It's a very beautiful uh, idea that you can hang on trees so that the birds can come to your homes or to community gardens or to the barangays. And there are other ideas that you can do with plastics. You can turn them into stools like this ones that I'm showing as organizers, as even Christmas decors and um, wall covers so to if you want to screen out ugly spots in the barangays you can do them like this and use them as planters for your vegetables or herbs even turn it into a sprinkler now these are uh, the next slide is our ideas of what we can do with waste paper we can turn them into new paper color them make them into special paper for cards or for uh, special things for wrappers. We can turn them into organizers, into even um, what we show there, uh, say uh, lighting fixture, no? And I can see ya. So the next slide, please. Metal drums can be turn, turned into beautiful things. You can turn them into organizers for bicycles, into outdoor furniture, lababo, or even ovens for your pizza or breads, or some uh, storage space that can be used as your side tables or center tables. Oh, even... Uh, Tires can be used to make beautiful things. You can use them in the barangays as shelves for helmets when people come in their motorbikes, as umbrella stand, or as center table, as chairs, or even uh, this beautiful uh, side table where you can store your beer, put ice in it, and then use it for your uh, drinking sessions. No? Next slide, please. Oh, even broken pots can be turned into beautiful things. Can you imagine if you have this decorating your barangays or your uh, offices or um, your homes? No? Can, I'm sure it will be a beautiful sight to come home to and um, um, you are able to uh, divert these things away from the landfill. So your bio waste, no, it's so important because they comprise the biggest part of the waste stream. We should recover them and turn them into compost. You know, Cebu is a peculiar problem because we import 70% of what we eat. And because of that, I think we should take this food security issue into our own hands by the households, by the different stakeholders in the community, by the barangays, so that we don't come to a point in the future where even if we have money, we will have no 
food to buy. You know, our food come from Bukid Nun, Davao, Cagayan de Oro, Dapitan, and elsewhere, Iloilo, Bohol, Australia, Benguet. We don't have our own, but we have people to feed. So we should really do something about it. Next slide, please. Each barangay is mandated to have a composting facility. Now, in our program, we want our sitios, puroks, churches, subdivisions, private establishments, all to have their own composting facilities. Next slide, please. But we are proposing that we have a composting facility for the cluster of barangays in the north and in the south of Cebu City so that even our landfill area should have a composting area. Um, I am proposing to the city that, you know, instead of us doing, um, sending our malata waste to the trucks and add to the cost of, of our solid waste management, we should keep all households all establishments, all schools, all um, churches, and every institution should not send malata waste to the trucks. Instead, turn them into compost and grow their food at home, in the schools, in the churches, wherever. I have here pictures of what we can do with the compost that we generate from our bio waste. Here, I'm showing some examples of community gardens. Know that uh, the barangays can establish. There are vacant lots that they can point out. There is uh, an ordinance by uh, Councilor Zafra, I think passed in 2021, where incentives are given to lot owners who allow that their they can't lots be used for community gardens. I'm sure the lot owners will not mind because there will be no permanent structures. It will just be gardens, plots of, plots of vegetables or, or uh, herbs that we can grow there. So there should also be food gardens in schools, in churches, in private establishments so that we address our food security issue. So here are more pictures of food gardens in residential subdivisions in sitios and puroks. This, uh, they should be turning their um, vacant spaces, their open spaces, their public areas into beautiful food gardens and benefit from eating nutritious, uh, freshly harvested and chemical-free uh, vegetables and fruits. There is also one thing that we really need to do urgently and immediately. We should stop allowing people to bring out their garbage to the streets. Number one, because we will always see basura on, this, on the roadside if we allow a certain number of hours for people to bring it out. Also because when we start implementing the no segregation, no collection policy, when the basura are already outside, there is no more control of what to take and what not to take. Mm -hmm. So our barangay and enforcement officers should help us and our uh, CESET enforcement team should help us uh, campaign that only the waste that will be collected for that day will be given to the trucks when the trucks are already outside, not when the trucks are still to come. So we really have to, in Cebu City, we have about 197 hot spots that we need to convert to beautiful landscape lighted green spots so that when we drive around the city, when we walk around the city or jog around the city, that's what will meet our eyes 
and and um, it will be really very pleasant to visit and to live in Cebu City. So how do we propose to do this? We can achieve what we are proposing if we partner with everybody. So who do we partner? We partner with the recyclers. We partner with the barangays because this will be a barangay-led program. We, private, we partner with private haulers, with environment advocates, with the business sector, with waste treatment facilities, with the educational institutions, religious organizations, civic organizations, and everyone else. Our households, they all have to be our partners in doing our proper solid waste management. So our approach is really participatory. Next slide, please. So what we are saying is that the churches, the Mormons, the Catholic Church, the Baptist, all the religion should be our partners. Dep Ed and Ched should be our partner. Um, malls like SM, um, Ayala, the Metro Group, they all should be our partners. The different agencies, Department of Agriculture, Department of Trade and Industry, and um, Department of Environment should be our partner. Um, the Cebu Chamber of Commerce, the Chinese Filipino Chamber of Commerce, the Philippine Retailers Association, and other um, business groups should be our partner in doing proper solid waste management. And even international groups. We already signed a uh, memorandum of agreements with Klewat Oi and River Recycle, two Finland-based uh, organizations that will who will help us with the cleaning up of our rivers and our coastal areas we are uh, we also partnered with plastic credit exchange or the aling tendera group for them to set up container vans in different strategic areas these vans come with a bailing machine uh, weighing scale and capital of 10,000 pesos for the Aling Tendera to buy plastics from the public. No? And we hope to also partner with Green Ants. This is a group doing, um, doing uh, processing of plastics into pavers, into construction materials, and they are really helping in diverting plastics away from landfills and away from our seas and water bodies. And Oceana is there, also an international group that helps watch the oceans. We are the number one polluter of plastics in the world today. So everybody is looking at the Philippines. We should do our part. Uh, we should solve the problem and, and um, be a good steward to our common home. So this program that we are proposing will impact to nine or 10 out of the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So it will impact on no poverty, um, no hunger. Rhea, can you help me read this? No poverty, no zero hunger. Zero hunger. Good health and well-being. Clean water and sanitation. Number eight is decent work and economic growth. Yes. Eleven sustainable cities, cities and communities. Thirteen climate, climate action. action. Number fourteen included life below water, and then also fifteen life on land, and finally partnerships for the goals. So. Oh, if we all come together, Cebu City will finally be the Singapore-like with Melbourne features, Cebu City. With your presentation, ma'am, I really commend how detailed you are in presenting your strategies, especially in the barangay level. Kaya ito magina magsugod. And I can attest, Jude, nga unsa jud kabati ang impact diha sa tong kadalanan kaning gitawag na tong hotspots. Correct. There is mahug na to nga, it may be harsh to tell, pero... Nahug nga irresponsible kay ta sa to ang mga basura. And we are thinking nga, 
ah, ninhiman ang hotspots, ariman kasagaran mula mo agi ang garbage truck. So, probably, ilangan ng hapiton. That kind of mindset and align ka siya sa imuang idea presented earlier ng atong mga basura, angay sila mo balik sa silagikan. Especially, for example, sa ato ang mga bottles nga naaman day tay mga recyclers nga willing pa kaayo nga makagamit pag-usab sa kana nga mga basura. And another thing is, grabe jud ang ka-detailed ni mo in getting involved sa kada usa sa atong sitios porox diha sa ato ang barangay level and thinking nga uh, you even made initiatives lain-lain para sa mountain barangays og diri sa urban nga mahug nato nga sakto man jud nga dapat lain-lain siya kay example na may uban nga barangays nga gamay ra population na ay uban nga barangays diri sa syudad nga angay nato focusan for example barangay Guadalupe yes. nga dako kay sa population dako kay daghan kayo siya og mga buildings or houses nga involves and for sure daghan sad silag basura nga makontribute din he sa atong syudad okay. and i know ma'am nga mas mapalapdan pa nato ang enforcement ni ini if maanaatay amendment diha sa ato ang ordinance and upon talking with you earlier 1991 pa ang ato ang ordinance can yeah. you explain further ma'am kung asa na ta karon sa kani nga ordinance na propose na banina na bay mga meetings or deliberations with our city councilors okay kanang Can you imagine we have a 1991 ordinance no that says na each of us should take care of our tukaran 5 meters in front so that I'm sure every part of the roadside has an owner be it mm -hmm. a household be it an establishment be it a school be it a church whatever nagud na siya owner so if each of us magpakabana and will clean that 5 meter area sus nindo taka sa syudad we will not need any more street sweepers we will not need any more kaning mga enforcers na sige lang in town og issue citations unya ang mga tao kanang wala gyud mo wala gyud mo cooperate no so personally i've written to our councillors seeking help on this different legislative agenda that I have uh, mentioned to you. Um, ako yud silang gihang yu. Na ako one letter that says, an appeal to our councillors. Uh, all the 18 of them I have provided. I have provided them with this solid waste management plan which I printed nga. Detailed yud ni diri ang unsay buha to nun so that they will understand that uh, this program will help us bring us to uh, achieve our different goals. Number one, um, that we achieve uh, the, our diversion targets as mandated by the National Economic uh, Solid Waste Management Commission. No, we are mandated to in the ten in the ten year program to divert eighty five percent of our waste. No um, we are mandated to by two laws to do things properly, like the Republic Act nine oh three, the ecological solid waste management law of year two thousand, um, is a very beautiful law that if we followed it since the start, nindut nagyud unta ato ang sistema karon no. Um, there's another law that mandates all LGUs to have an organic program. If we do this, um, solbad ang atong uh, food security issue, solbad atong health, solbad atong hunger problems, and um, malnutrition. Mm -hmm. No, so if we do these suggestions, we will be compliant aning mga balaod. Also, um, if our barangays do things properly, they will be able to achieve the seal of good local governance that is there uh, being um, mandated by or, or organized by the Department of Interior and Local Government. Um, kanang seal of good local governance comes with certain perks. Kita in 2011, nahatagan taog um, 55 million grant. Mm -hmm. No, because uh, 
we achieve that seal. Pero, the barangays have to work hard. The barangays have to follow our ordinances, follow the, the provisions of our law. The spirit of the law, beautiful, good. Pero, implementation, medyo nagkulang ta, no? So, if the barangays are able to achieve the seal of good local governance, Cebu City will in turn be able to achieve it as a city. No? Kay kanang di takaabot ana kung ang barangays wala nag uh, wala sila nag um, work towards the achievement of that seal. So uh, the other things that we will achieve, no? Ma reduce atong budget for solid waste management. Last year, atong budget was over 500 million pesos to collect mixed waste, bring to the landfill. But, you know, if we do things differently, I think we can reduce the budget easily to one half. And then there can be revenue streams from sale of our rec recyclables, from sale of our compost, or from sale of the produce of the community gardens and the household mm -hmm mga gardens no so then we address our food security uh, problem we address our problem of baha because ang problem sa baha dili lang yud ang pagpadako sa atong mga culverts mga drainage system but really to properly dispose our solid waste too no so mo na siya nga mga uh, goals na pwede nato ma-achieve if we do things properly. So, mahog nga correlated yun siya tanan, ma'am, no? Yes, Ang yes. task force bubat sa baha, no way, nga dako sa kaya budget nga kailangan. And if masulbad na dako kay ng tabang sa city na to. Yeah. Can you imagine the problems we as citizens experience kung masudlan o tubig atong mga balay, mm -hmm. mga guba atong mga appliances, lisod to clean our houses, dali, anayon, mm -mm. kung naanay portion nga. The problems to the establishments, kung, kung mabahaan, mabahaan sila, no? And then, of course, kanang, temporarily in the streets, people get, kanang, ma, ma stuck sa mga dalan because misaka ang tubig. So, these are really uh, problems that we should not be experiencing kung unta many many years back ato ning gi gi atiman na ba so mao na siya kinanglan tag help sa tanan kinanglan gyud tag help sa atong mga konsehal kay atong mga uh, ordinances um, need to be updated and also ang kaning atong um, uh, coming mga na ay mga national laws that we have also to support with local mm -hmm. ordinances like the Extended Producers Responsibility Act which was just passed recently um, kinangla na nato support taan with our own ordinance I have the chance to read sa atong 1991 nga ordinance ma'am relating to solid waste management and sa ako ang pag-evaluate sa maong ordinance ako itong nakita ang Aside sa update uh, aside sa outdated ka siya, ang na-mention dito kay ang mga member nga uh, hotspots. And knowing nga uh, 1991 pa to and 2004 uh, 2024 na ta karon, for sure na pun na ang mga hotspots. And ang uban gali na to nga mga constituents wala na nagsunod sa katong mga hotspots designated diha sa maong ordinance. And aside from that, ang gina-mention lang dito nga na atay mga hotspots og hapiton ang maunga basura. Pero this 2024, with your initiatives ag sa imuhang proposal, ma'am, atong makita ang involvement, ang, ang collaboration sa atong ang mga katawhan nga sila po, responsible po sila sa ilang basura. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, is musudiha ang ato ang pag-recycle sa ato ang mga basura. And sa akong pagtanaw o pagpaminaw sa imong discussion earlier, ma'am, akong nakita nga grabe jud ang Pag siksik ni mo by detail na, okay, dapat kada barangay, kaya naagitay ka o galing yung composting area, dapat kada barangay na ay area nga ato ang mga recyclable nga duulo na lang sa recyclers. So, kani ba ma'am na as a possibility nga nasa tay group of recyclers ato asan silang i-organize, assigned per barangay? So actually, part of the 
work of the barangay captains and their ecological mm -hmm. solid waste management committee is to map out kinsa ng recyclable recyclers existing in their area mm -hmm. so ilagyud ng i part sa ilang solution in fact they should be members mm -hmm. of that committee so dapat yun na angay yun ng ing anaon na uh, na na sila role to play sa atong solid waste management na going back Ray kita sa city dili ta gusto malip service ni gisugda na nato og train atong city hall employees last year we trained about 3500 Cebu city employees we ran about 54 training sessions on proper solid waste management we taught our employees to do composting and some options for recyclable mm -hmm. waste we also started training our city scholars about we have about 14,000 city scholars. We've already trained more than 8,000 of them. So, our next batch of trainees, we will finish with the employees and the city scholars. Our next batch of trainees will be our PWDs, our mm. four piece beneficiaries, our um, um, senior citizens, all these groups that receive ayuda from our city we want them to be our champions in our solid waste mm -hmm. management and um, we are re recommending to the mayor that he sign a, a memo or i don't know if it should be an executive mm -hmm. order that will make our employees our city scholars make it mandatory now for them to uh, do proper recycling at home and and composting so that this is already a big chunk of the constituents that will stop sending malata and recyclables to the trucks so and then unta sila makatay katay ni because they will share this to their neighbors to their relatives to their friends na ang usa na train mahimog na pulo nag practice or or more households, no? So this is our our hope na motabang uh, nato kaning mga groups that we train. There are also groups outside that are helping mm -hmm. us, like the Regional Center of Expertise, led by Mam Ma Cherry Balescas. They also go around training, doing the same trainings mm -hmm. that we're doing um, to mga communities in the barangays. I've also offered the barangays that I'd like to do the same for their stakeholders in the barangays. Um, kaning barangay Basak San Nicolas, Maog first ni Duol Nako, nagpatabang. So, kami and uh, the ILG, si Doc Nila, we went to the barangay, we, tra we trained their principals, their kanang mga purok leaders, their establishments on proper solid waste management. So today, I think sila ang pinaka-advanced mm -hmm. in terms of solid waste management uh, program na naga sunod sa ato ang gi propose in doing because sila pud ang nai initiative mm -hmm. nga na, ni reach out yud sila nato to for help. So um, it's very nice to note si Barangay Basak San Nicolas they have this program where they give pencils and ball pens to students who accumulate mga sachets mm -hmm. kanang wrappers sa candies kanang sa coffee sa biscuits ipanood o plastics and then we gather them we we bring them to naga and exchange for cemento but it's a very good practice because it's so difficult to pick up kaning mga gagmay na kaayog mga pinutol sa coffee or mm -hmm. ana it's very difficult to do. So if you just keep kita tanan unta mga empleyado, we have one by the by our side now where we just put all our sachets. The kukay tabang to the kanang garbage crew nga dili ni maabot diha sa kadalanan and 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 to the trucks. No kay lisod ni siya i, i manage. Going back sa partnership, ma'am. Naghan kayo ta earlier og mga na mention nga partnership including fraternities and the universities yes. asa naman ta karon ana man nanabatay mga discussion meetings with them nga nahitabo 
Um, kanang we are trying to divide the work, no? So, uh, I spoke to Councillor Safra ang sa schools, we are requesting him na siya mo ay mo champion diha dapita. So, sa interfaith group, na apod tay gihangyo to champion diha dapita. And then, um, the fraternities we have not yet started. Um, we we are asking our kanang um, sana mga God ba na? Gender and development and development nga grupo sa barangays to also initiate na mga programa na makakaminta to to uh, push our solid waste management program as proposed. And mentioning gender and development focal, ma'am, ako lang na hunaw na andron nga, they are handling different sectors in our barangay, the women, the children, the youth, the air path, and possibly if they can know about this kind of initiative, is pwede nilang buhaton as livelihood programs. Yes, yes, yes. I was thinking ba, kung maabutag panahon na di na takinahanglan of street sweepers to clean our streets because everybody is cleaning their part, maybe we can turn our existing street cleaners to uh, uh, give them a livelihood where they will be recycling our plastics, making them into brooms or or our plastics turning them into kind of things na pwede ibaligya to the public. Muhang yu tas atong mga mall owners to allow us a spot in the malls where we can display our beautiful recyclable mm -hmm. products, no? Na, na pwede na to ni siya. Ma, I'm sure people will patronize knowing that we are doing this to help our environment. And also showing care for our environment. Yes, again. yes, correct. Good. At least we, our Pope in 2015 issued an encyclical uh, asking us, pleading us to uh, be good stewards of mm -hmm. our common home, no? And to, uh, he has, see, he suggested that we should have a common plan that uh, to, to, in order to take care of our, of the, the earth. So I think this, program nato is a contribution and is an answer to the call of of our pope and you are totally correct ma'am imong mentioned sa to ang introduction nga your initiative is totally totally different sama sa ato ang traditional nga nakatunan nga garbage truck ra gyud nagrevolve ra sa garbage truck ang tanang kasulbaran and knowing nga kani murag instead nga magbudget ta sa ato ang another purchase of garbage trucks yeah, knowing a listed kay siya mahimong possibly 80 barangays, dili siya makaya nga atong procurean tanan dire with the city budget unlike sa ubang barangays nga naagid sa ikaw galingon nga garbage trucks, listed kayo nga magprocure ta para sa tanan niya knowing pila ka buog ang ato ang another truck for the paper, another truck for the recyclable materials, another truck for the solid uh, for the biodegradable waste. So, grabe, impossible ka ayo ano yung daku kay nga budget nga kailangan. But with this kind of initiative, mas mapaminusa na to and mabalhin, ma-reallocate pa na to ang maong nga budget, ma'am. Yes, instead, magamit na to for more scholarships mm -mm. for our social services to our constituents. No? Dili pa dong sa uh, gasto nga labay for the wrong things. Yes. And knowing nga gamay na lang kayo ang malabay diha sa ato ang landfill, dili na lang siya ingon anak ka problema nga. Unlike karon sa nahitabo nga, kulikta, kulikta, labay dito tanan. Labay, labay, labay ra gyud atong solusyon. Mga ano gyud kada tuig more gyud atong hibawan mag a, 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 look kanang i include sa atong budget purchase of garbage trucks. More gyud na year in year out garbage trucks, palit garbage trucks. More na atong hibawan. And speaking with ordinance, for sure, dugay na jud kay ning no, seg no segregation, no collection policy. Yet 2024 na taron murag na ang gihapon, dako gihapon siya nga problema relating sa ato ang gubat sa baha nga murag gihapon. Problema ra gihapon sa basura and dako sad ka ayong enforcement sa ato ang mga river commanders as well as ground river commanders sa ato ang mga river troopers mm -hmm. nga daghan kay sila tons of garbage nga makulikta sa atong basura mm -hmm. diha sa ato ang mas, mga sapa and knowing sa ilang reveal sa ato ang uh, Monday mangulikta sila by Wednesday balik na pud ang pagpanlabay mm -hmm. sa ato mga katawhan 
and ang defense mechanism sa ato ang mga constituents ay wala may maintain nga mukulikta sa among basura murag bati ka ayo siya paminaw mm-hmm. no wing nga na amantay budget na amantay people being in the possession nga naglihok in town anak but people have to mind nga dili man ni mahimong posible sa city government without the cooperation of, of everyone. everyone yes yes Kay, usa pag yun na ray no kanang atong giingon no mag clean up ta the mm-hmm. river troopers the city hall employees go out to different areas to clean up abenimo ako ay criticize that because I'm saying dili yud ang ay manginvite from outside to do the clean ups ang ato yud buhaton is kita mismo gapuyo diha kita yud maning kamot mag clean up na atong area and then dili ta kanang mag celebrate mag pakpak tanga oy 14,000 mm-hmm. ni appeal sa clean up in this clean up dili yud ng atong way of measuring success Maingon tag pila man sa community ni Apil Yud kay ang ma- nahitabo sa over the years ang mga taga community galantaw ra sa ilang mga bintana gatan aw nato kita tagagawas ng limpyo ta diha nag nagkuha ta sa ilang mga basura onya maingon pa diri diha nato nga balik-balik mo ha salamat ka ayo <laughs> di ba so Dili na ta maging ana si Lagyud mismo atong i-invite to help do the clean up para maka-experience sila niya. Ang atong measurement of success is unsa na na-reduce nga volume from the last clean up to karon ni gamay-gamay na hangtod ni gamay hangtod wala na gyud time mapunit because everybody is doing it properly na. I totally agree sa imong statement earlier, ma'am. Nga na imong ingon nga balik-balik mo. Kay thinking ba nga grabe jud ka ayo na mo kay ubang frustration sa tuwang mga river commanders nga muingon sila nagkolekta sila padong pa lang sila uli sa gikan ang ulik ta mo ingon nang limpyo sa ka, ato mga sapa mo ingon na nga kanus amo mo balik. Or ma'am, ma'am yun na. imbis ang, ang ang uban gali nga barangay officials and barangay staffs in imbis na inoon sila ang mga usog diha sa ilang jurisdiction. Ang city government dili man maka maakupar tanan, maakomodate tanan every week, every day. Is kita unta mo tabang lang ta sa ilaha in making their jurisdiction clean enough with their help sa uban sa mga mga staffs or barangay officials nga mangusog sa maong problema mismo sa ilahang barangay is nahug na inuon nga sila na ang tigrelay sa information din sa city government nga ma'am daghan na pud kay direk basura kanus amo man limpyo pag usa and sa imuhang represent earlier nga proposal ma'am ato jo makita nga imo jo gi-involve ang ato ang mga barangay officials kay of course sila man ang naadiha inadlaw-adlaw and for sure sila ang nakaibaw kinsa ni mulabay des ato mga sapa kinsa ni mga constituents nga magsigi og labay diha sa mga hotspots nga walay segregation na hitabo and of course this will be possible ma'am with the coordination diha sa ubang departments nato sa Cebu City government nga ma-improve po dang atong system sa atong garbage collection for the meantime nga wala pa ni fully na implement ang maong proposal and karon ma'am please do the honor to share sa ato ang public ang video kabahin sa pag sa to pagpatubo sa maong paliya oh, and other vegetables yes. uh, this is a video na will tell us na pwede ra gyud dili ta mulabay sa atong mga malata waste sa trucks instead use it to grow food at home so let's i would like to share this with, video with everybody growing uh, ampalaya using our waste as fertilizer So, can you imagine um, using a small space, you can um, harvest as many as one. Tulurag yun ka seeds ang pagsugod. Tulurag yun. Soak it in water for six hours. Unya, you can use mga discarded paper disposable cups. Kanisha is garden soil, 50% with uh, tipa, tipasi and uh, compost moy imong germinating medium tulurag yun ka seeds
And then you need to water this daily para mo germinate ang seed. So after seven days, na na siya pipila ka leaves. Because ang palaya is a climbing plant, um, pwede regyot ta mo gamit aning mga discarded containers, no? Like this paint, paint pail na 20 liter. Then, you bore holes para madrain ang water and then you bore three bigger holes on the side. And you'll know why. So, kani, again, um, garden soil, 50%, 25% um, compost, and then 25% rice hull or tipasi. You mix it well. And that's your potting, potting medium for the three ka seedlings. So you fill up the container up to the level of the three holes that you made and insert the seven-day-old seedling like this. So, di, you, the, di na ta kinanglan mo palit. Just any discarded na dako-dako nga container. Then, you insert this plastic bottle na naay mga holes. Kay diha ta mo butang sa atong mga fertilizer. Na atong mga basura sa kitchen. So, mga... Kani, mga fruit peels, isoak overnight, and maunay atong i-fertilize sa atong seedlings. And then you just uh, water it regularly. Gamita ang isoak nga liquid to water your seedlings. So, Paspas ka ayo ang ampalaya actually. Because climbing plant man siya, you need to provide a structure asa siya mo climb. So, pwede rin yung lipak no, sa bamboo. So every week, just fill up your container with more kitchen waste. Kay every week, katong imong gibutang, mahimo na to og yuta og balik. And then just pour the unsay gisok ni mo sa mga basura. Normally, at, the, at that at this point, no, nga growing pa siya, more like adolescent pa siya, ang best to fertilize are the green mga leaves, mga green stuff. Kanisha, so every week, butang lang unsay mga basura. Mingun, pwede rice na leftover, pwede ragyud. And then ako, I have a particular tweak to this. I use kinilis. Kani you prune off the tips para mo branch out, no? Ang kuan ang uh, tips, mahimo siya mga tulo ka branches. Thank you. 
you have to be able to differentiate the female flowers from the male flowers so those that have a fruit at the back following the flower are female flowers buntis na siya so at this point when it starts flowering it's best to feed it with mga malata nga potassium rich basura so lata lata nga saging lata nga papaya or other sweet stuff um monya ni siya ang maayo i-feed sa aning stage na of the plant you prune off the side growth so that the concentration of the growth is going up so if you notice na anagyud siya mga flowers kani siya is a female flower because there's a fruit that uh, that follows behind the flower female flower ni female flower ni So kani klaro ka ayo female. Kani is a female flower. Sa female flower. Now this is a male flower, wala like fruit ka sunod. You pluck off the petals and expose the center niya and hand pollinate with the female flowers or ipakis lang na siya ang imuhang male and female flowers. Kay the pollination will allow the fruits to be strong and then most modagan pag yud diha ang kanang kuan ang fruits. And then continue lang yud ug feed the uh, plants with your malata waste. Kani siya best soaked overnight, no? So, ang tulo kaliso na himo na ing ani kadaghan o fruits. O niya, you're sure pag yun na walay chemicals to grow it? Kaya ang atong gigamit atong malata. I hope this video will convince you na dili yun ta pwede, uh, dili, dili yun ta angay mulabay sa atong malata to the trucks and instead use it to grow our food at home. So this type of growing you can use to grow pipino, kanang patola, kanang even sayote if you are in a cool place or kalabasa puti or kanang upo ba upo no so this kanang mga type of plants same system of growing lang yun so can you imagine if you have maybe four or six kabalde growing different fruits di ba makasave na yun ka sa imuhang marketing every week so nya you can do co-planting too. Pwede na yun, i-co-plant ni mo sa abos, si Buyas Dahon, para wag yun pests mo dool. Or you can co-plant with basil, or or other kanang mga na ay baho nga vegetables or herbs. Kaya that will ward off pests. 60 days. 60 so, days. about 60 days. Depende on what you feed. Imagine tanang households ma mo ina mo adapt sa na nang practice. Yes, and big yun sila ka reklamo na kay it does not require a big space. Pila raman to one square meter no per balde. So if you have extra ten square meters in your homes, you can grow ten ka different vegetables. And sa tong video ma mo la magito na kailangan of fertilizer kay tuod sa ato ang waste nga gi adapt na to gi recycle na to mo ragi ato gigamit mo ragi yun ato gigamit. And so, yun do juga yung siya nga initiative ma'am if ma-apply na to siya tanan din hisa yes ka, kung kaibaw siya. lang mga tao cause I'm sure if people learn about these things they will do they will do it kaya sila ragud ang ma-benefited na ako'y naibaw na katong father of container gardening sa iyahang 80 square meters na na-save niya for home garden ang iyahang experience number one 
For the last 10 years, wala na daw nang sakit sa ilang pamilya. So save siya in medical cost, costs and hospitalization, no? Number two, he's able to save about 12,000 pesos a month from not having to buy vegetables, fruits, chicken, eggs, and tilapia. Kay. He's able to do it in his 80 square meters. And he's able to earn up to 18,000 pesos a month from selling his surplus to his neighbors. So can wow. you imagine, di na takinanglan salary increase? Nara di ha? Nara di sa ato ang tungkana ng kasulbaran. Yeah, sulbad pa sa problema sa basura. Now, ngindot kayo ang atong discussion karong buntaga, ma'am er, ma Emma, and any parting shot or message sa atong publiko before we will end our program. Um, kaning atong gi-advocate, no? Kanang, there is some some form of urgency, some sort of urgency aninia, because, you know, if we do, don't do this properly, if we don't manage our waste properly, this can contribute to climate change. And we cannot afford that anymore. We cannot afford to experience another Odette or a stronger Odette. Diba? That experience of Odette was, was terrible for all of us. Di nagitak afford ana. But you know, if we continue to do waste management um, wrongly, sus padung ta aning mga disasters, aning mga kwan. Usapa ka, ka problem that it can cause is sea level rise. When our temperature increases, ang, ang estimate, if we go 2 degrees or 1.5 degrees, gani ang atong target, no? But if we go higher, Ang mahitabo, certain parts of the coastal side of Cebu City will be underwater. And it will not be underwater just one day or two days, one week. It will be underwater permanently. So, asa man tapadong. So, I think, um, kitang tanan, we have to reflect on this. And somehow, we all have a part to to do proper solid waste management kay dili pwede siyudad lang ang maghuna-huna ani kita gyud tanan because kita tanan ga generate basura daghang salamat Mar Maria Emma <coughs> Ramas the overseer of the city's department of public services and personally ma'am i've learned so much sa atong discussion karon and thank you as well for sharing your short plan diha sa ato ang solid waste management din sa siyudad sa Subo and for sure Mga kasubo dako ka ini og requirement sa ato ang cooperation ever everybody's participation kani sa maong goal og mission nato dinhi sa tong syudad sa Subo for the benefit of everybody. Ma'am again daghan kayong salamat og maayong buntag kanato. Maayong buntag sa tanan. Mm -hmm.